All right, this lesson will be about graphing cube root functions, such as these. All right, I'm actually going to skip to number six first, since that is the parent function, and all of the other problems will be based off of this. So when we want to graph the cube root of x, we are always going to start with the x values negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. The reason is these are easy to take the cube root of. So if I take the cube root of these, I will get negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Since this is the final answer, we will simply go ahead and graph these points and draw the curve. So negative eight, negative two will be right here. Please make your guide points very clearly visible. Uh, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, and eight, two. So we'll just draw this curve and that'll be the parent function to which we will refer. So your graph should look like that. All right, so all of these other functions are transformations of the parent function. So um, we will start by graphing the parent function cube root of x every single time. So we will over and over again use the x values negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. And once again, the cube root of that will give us negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. All right, if there were an a value, I would make a third column and apply the a value. But since there's not, let's go ahead and graph the uh, parent function here. Um, let's see. This will just be a skeleton, do not connect the points. So I have negative eight, negative two, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, and eight, two. So now it is time to apply the transformations. There are two transformations here. Um, the negative one here on the inside will send us to the right by one. And this positive two here in the front is the same thing as if it were a positive two on the end. There's no difference. Um, so that's still going to be up two. So right one, up two. So let's just take each one of these uh, guide points and move them right one, up two. So if I do that, this point will end up here. Right one, up two. Okay, and right one up two. So we will just draw our curve through these guide points. So number one should look like this. Now all of these problems will have the same domain and range. The domain, which is the x values, will be negative infinity to positive infinity because it goes to the left forever and to the right forever. And similarly, the range will always be negative infinity to positive infinity because it goes down forever and it goes up forever. Okay, looking at number two, um, there's no a value, so uh, we can just get by with a two column table. So we will use the same values with which we always begin, negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. And uh, here we will do the parent function cube root of x so that's negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Once again, let's uh, graph the parent function. Negative eight, negative two, negative one, negative one, zero, zero, one, one, eight, two. And now let's do the transformation. Uh, do not connect these points, leave it as a skeleton. Um, okay, there's only one transformation here. This will send us to the right one, okay? It's the opposite of what you would normally think when you go left, right in there. So we will simply take all of these points and move them to the right by one. So that will put us here, 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 and here. And then simply draw the curve through those guide points. So problem number two should be looking like this. And as always, uh, the domain and range will be negative infinity to positive infinity. 
left forever, right forever, down forever, up forever. All right, number three, still doesn't have an A value, so we don't need the third column. Uh, so once again, use negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8, uh, because we can easily take the cube root of these x's. Uh, we will get negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. All right, we will graph the skeleton of the parent function, uh, negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 8, 2. Do not connect these dots. Now, um, since there's no A value, all we need to do is the uh, transformation. There's only one transformation. We are moving to the right by three. So I will take each one of these guide points and move them to the right three. So that will put us here, 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 and actually one off the grid, but that's okay. All we have to do now is draw the curve through those guide points. So your graph for number three should look like this. Please make sure your guide points are visible through your curve. I should be able to see the dots. And as always, your domain and range are both negative infinity to positive infinity. Number four is the first problem that has an A value of two. So we will need a third column on this one. Uh, but we don't need it yet. So let's start off with the parent function. And as always, we will use the x values negative 8, uh, negative 1, 0, positive 1, and 8. Um, we choose these values because we can easily take the cube root of them. If we do, we will get negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Um, because we have an A value, we're going to need a third column here. So just let's add on a third column like this. And in that third column, we will apply the A value, which is multiplying by 2. So we will do 2 times the cube root of x. So we'll multiply all these by 2. So that will give us negative 4 negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. All right, when you make that third column for the A value, we will throw away the previous column. So this is what we're going to graph instead of the parent function. This is still just a skeleton. This is not the final answer because we haven't done the shifting yet. So do not connect these dots. So we have negative 8, negative 4, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 2, and 8, 4. Okay, so you can see the vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Everything's getting taller, double height. All right, now it's time to apply the two transformations. Um, other than, you know, we already did vertical stretch by a factor of 2. Um, but we also have this. Because of this plus 6 in, on the inside, this is going to move us to the left 6. Um, this plus 2 on the end will move us up 2. All right, and we already spoke of uh, vertical stretch by a factor of 2. But we should write that down. So um, just take each one of these guide points and move them left 6 and up 2. All right, if I move this left 6 and up 2, this is going to be very far off the graph. So I'm going to have to let that one go. Um, but the rest of these should be OK. So I will move this to the left 6. OK, um, so that should be right here. And up 2, which would be right here. So left 6, up 2. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing with these. So this point should end up here. I'm sorry, here. And uh, this point should end up here. And this point. Okay, so left six up two. That point should end up right there. So I'm going to draw my curve using these guide points and knowing 
I have one more guide point um, over here someplace. Okay, so I'm going to draw my curve now. All right, so your graph for number four should look very much like this. Um, just like all the other problems, the domain and range is still negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, problem number five has an ugly A value, so we're going to need a third column on this one. It's uh, obviously going to involve some decimals. Uh, but let's start off with the parent function. We will, as always, use the values of uh, negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. We will use these x values anytime we are doing the cube root um, because these come out to be integers. So uh, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And then we'll get negative 1, 0, positive 1, and positive 2. But don't graph these. Um, when we have an A value, we're going to apply the A value before we even graph the skeleton. So let's go ahead and um, make that third column by stretching these lines out. Okay, and in this third column, we will apply the A value. So we will go ahead and do two thirds times the cube root of x. All right, I'm going to use the calculator. I could do two thirds over and over again. For example, I could do two thirds times negative two. Wait, I meant to put that in parentheses. I could do two thirds times negative two, and that's going to give me negative four over three. Um, if I need to toggle it, that's negative 1.3. I'm going to round it. So, um, so remember, I'm not doing the x values. I'm multiplying 2 thirds times these y values. So, so far, I got negative 1.3. Now, of course, 2 thirds times negative 1 is just negative 2 thirds. Um, so, I don't need a calculator for that. I know that 2 thirds is 0.6. So this will be negative 0.6. And then 2 thirds of 0 is just 0. And then it will just be the positive versions of these. So it will be 0.6 and 1.3. Once we have the third column, let's throw out the middle column. So we're, we will graph these now, but this is just the skeleton. This is not the final answer because we haven't done the shift yet. So don't connect the dots. So we have negative 8, negative 1.3. That would be about here. Negative 1, negative 0.6. OK, that's about here. 0, 0, 1, and 0.6, and 8, and 1.3. OK? So this is the skeleton. Do not connect these dots. Now we will go ahead and do the translation. Uh, this plus one will send us left one. Remember, it's the opposite of what you would normally think. So let's just move each of these guide points left one. And this will be our final answer. Here, 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 and here. So all we have to do is draw the curve through those guide points. All right, so your final answer for number five should look like this. And of course, the domain and range are still negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, we already did number six. It was just the parent function. So it should be pretty self-explanatory. I'll see you on the next video uh, for some more example problems.